one of these men will be happy to cut your hair for $25. What is your name, please? My name is Jay Sebring. My name is Jay Sebring. My name is Jay Sebring. Only one of these men is the real Jay Sebring. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Barry Nelson, and Kitty Carlisle on to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Dristan Tablets for relief from colds, miseries, and sinus congestion. Dristan. Good evening, panel. Good evening. Hi, Bud. Well, all full of ginger tonight? Yeah. All right. Would you please open up your affidavits for the first time? Follow along with me with your copy of this first card. I, J. Sebring, own and operate the most exclusive men's hairstyling establishment of the world. I charge $25 for the first haircut and $15 thereafter. In my shop, I employ nine assistant hair designers, two manicurists, a shampoo man, a desk man, a porter, and a parking lot attendant. I am personally responsible for the hairstyling of Steve Allen, Elvis Presley, Henry Fonda, Peter Sellers, Milton Berle, Sammy Davis Jr., Eddie Fisher, and Marlon Brando, among others. Flying east to appear on To Tell the Truth, I made two stops. One in Las Vegas to cut Vic Damone's hair, and another in Palm Springs to perform the same service for my old customer, Frank Sinatra. Signed, Jay Sebring. Very well, panel. For our first round tonight, we have three gentlemen all claiming to be Jay Sebring, extraordinary hairstylist to men, I think you would say. And we start this first round with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Mr. Sebring, number one, uh, $25 for the first haircut. What if it's just like sort of bald and just doesn't have a lot of hair? Is it still $25? Still $25. I see. Uh, number two, how long does that $25 haircut last? Is it a thousand miler? <laughs> 40 minutes, two hours, depends. Oh, no, I mean, how long before the poor guy has to shell out the next 15? <laughs> depends on the hair. I see. Uh, number three, uh, do, you rec do they have standing appointments with you to beat your customers? No, they don't. And uh, number one, they just call up uh, and are able to make an appointment, or do, do, do they have standing appointments? No, they call and make an appointment when they need it. I see. Number two, who is George Masters? He's the uh, ladies' hair stylist. In Thank Hollywood. You. Thank you. Number three, wait a... Barry? Uh, number three, uh, do you use a clipper at all? Yes. Don't they... Uh, number two, do you use mostly a razor? No, on the I use only scissors. A clipper uh, is in the fee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what would I tip after a $25 job like <laughs> no. that? That's up to you. Uh, all right. Number three, this isn't even deductible, is it? Uh, look, supposing I came into your shop and you, you're a hairstylist, right? What would you suggest for me? <laughs> this is a pretty free thing, but... <laughs> uh, well, that's hard to uh, decide from this distance. Oh. You have to check and see how the hair oh, is. I have to see much, how much hair you've got. You're lucky he didn't say a It's all mine, anyway. <laughs> Number two, uh, what about the crew cut? Is it going out? Kitty. It's, well, in my shop it is. <laughs> uh, number one, without revealing any sort of personal, uh, private secrets, of all these gentlemen, uh, who would you say had the most hair? <laughs> Henry Fonda. The most of all. Mm. Um, and number two, what are the color of Mr. Sinatra's eyes? Brown. Uh, number three, uh, do you know where George Masters has his, uh, salon? Saks Fifth Avenue. Um, Number one, where is your shop, actually? 725 North Fairfax. You all have the same shop in North Fairfax, I take it. All three of you, two and three, so we don't lose yes. time. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about that? Why not a minute, you can't tell. <laughs> Tom. Oh, thank you, bud. Uh, number two, what is shingling to a barber? Shingling is cutting the hair in layers, as, as shingles on a house, actually. 
Thank you. Number one, do you know Barry Brown? No, I don't. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, <laughs> number three, how do you cut hair for a toupee? Is it, differ is it different from any other kind of a haircut? Well, you blend it in with the hair. Uh, uh, in other words, you have the toupee on at the time? Sometimes. Is that so? Yes. Do you know, number three, who Larry Gelbart's father is? No, I don't. Number two, do you know the Gelbart uh, shop in California? Sorry. Number one? No, I don't. Well, it's... There you are. And it's time for you to mark your ballot. So no more free haircuts. Just get to it. Mark your ballot at once, if you will, please. And, of course, without consultation. And vote for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, receive the customary $250 for each and every incorrect vote indulged in by our panel. And let's get to that right away. Tom, for whom did you vote? I think, first of all, we ought to say that a successful man who charges that much for a haircut probably deserves it, right? Yes, if he keeps yes. getting it. So I think our barber is a very good one. I voted for number three because number one said Master's Place was someplace else, and number two said that darling blue-eyed boy, Sinatra, <laughs> had brown eyes, and those eyes are very blue. All right, Peggy. Well, I voted for number three because Frank Sinatra has the most terrific blue eyes. <laughs> They're not brown. And besides, he knew, he seemed to me to know more, and he knew that George worked the sax fifth. Barry, your vote. I voted for number two, bud. Henry Fonda's hair uh, doesn't seem to be of a thick variety, and number three looks as though he's... It's a very indoor job, uh, unless he spent a lot of time under his own sun lamp, so I went with number two. <laughs> and he, do, he wouldn't help me anyway. Kitty. <laughs> I voted for number three. I can't believe that Henry Fonda has as much hair as, for instance, Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> and, and indeed, Mr. Sinatra's eyes are ravishing and charming and blue. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the votes are all in, the minds are made up, and away we go as we zero in on the truth to find out which one of these gentlemen actually actually is the top hairstylist for men. So will the real Jay Sebring please stand up? Oh. <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. Let's check on your two compatriots here. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do, sir? My name is Ken Allen, and I'm a wallpaper salesman for the Fine Art Wallpaper Company. <laughs> That's a little different kind of covering. Number two, your real name, and what do you do, sir? My name is Milton Winters. I'm a waiter at Sardi's East. <laughs> checking the score, we find the panel is a little bit smart there, I must say, in this first round. That leaves only one incorrect vote, and that totals $250, gentlemen, from Dristan, of course, as well as the gift package of the fine products and the makers of Dristan on your way out. We thank you very much for sharing your evening with us and hope you had as much fun as we did. Good night, and God bless you. Now, panel, meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Virginia David. My name is Virginia David. My name is Virginia David. Very well, panel. Will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Virginia David, am a racehorse owner, trainer, and a professional jockey. I ride in some 75 races each season, all against men. While I do ride for others, my favorite mount is my own eight-year-old mare, Sis Hutty. In the four years that I have been running Sis, we have entered 45 races. We came in first in 30 of those races and finished out of the money only three times. Signed, Virginia David. Very well, panel, you've heard these three young ladies all claiming to be Virginia David, girl jockey, and we'll start this one with boy jockey, Tom Poston. Uh, thank you, bud. Uh, Virginia number three, can you tell me who, who jockeys signal at the end of a race before they dismount? Who jockeys the signal? Who, who, to, who, to whom is that signal made? Oh, who, uh, the official. Uh, number two, how is that signal accomplished? With a wave of your bat. And to whom is that signal made, do you know? To the officials. Mm -hmm. Number one, any, any special official? 
No. Thank, thank you. Number one, uh, which direction do horses run in this country? Clockwise. And is that different in other uh, tracks around the world? Yes, it is. Thank you. Num number two, uh, Peggy. Thank you. Number one, how old is Sonny Jim Fitzsimmons? Very, very old. <laughs> thank you. Number two, what does it mean when a jockey has a bug? Uh, he has to win so many races before he loses the bug. Thank you. Uh, how many pounds is three? Number three, how many pounds is the bug? Uh, the bug is uh, 118. Thank you. Uh, number one, who's Larry Adams? He's a famous one. Thank you. Uh, number one, what track is now running in Florida? Hylia. Thank you. Number two, uh, what horse just raced in a famous race in France? What American horse? It's owned by Jack Price. Me? Yes, number two. Oh, carry back. Thank you. Um, Barry, uh, number two, uh, what are the withers on a horse? What, where would you locate the withers on a horse? Shoulders. Uh, number three, why do you ride, uh, why do they tell you to ride heels down? What advantage is there in that? Um, that just um, keeps your feet more secure in the stirrups. Keeps your feet I more see. secure. I see. Number two, uh, I'd like to know how the uh, men that you oppose in these races, how they feel about it. Do you find any prejudice of any kind? A little bit. Do they resent it? Sometimes. Uh, could you tell me, uh, what a Morgan is, number one? No, I can't. Number two, could you? It's a large size draft horse. What is a quarter horse, number three? A uh, quarter horse is a horse that uh, only runs well um, in a quarter Your horse mile. is, pardon me, your horse is eight years old. About how much longer can it run? Oh, not very much longer. <laughs> Kitty. Uh, number two, what is a Percheron? I... And what is a Percheron? I don't know. Number three, what is a Percheron? I don't know either. Do you know number one? No, I don't. No. Number two, are you very nervous when you start the race? Oh, uh, well, yes. Number three, why do the horses parade around in the paddock before a race? Uh, so that the um, people in the uh, concession can uh, view them. Thank you. Number one, where is Harbor de Grasse? Number two, race course. Do you, do you, do you race in the east, number three? No, just in the south. That's all the time we have, panel. I'm sorry, so uh, get your betting up at the window and let's go, shall we? Mark your ballots. Mark them at once and without change. Naturally, without consultation, as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. <coughs> all ballots marked? All right. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, uh, I tell you, I, I sort of had a kind of a feeling for number three up the top because of the way she came down the stairs. But then at the end, even though she might only race in the south, she should have known where Havre de Grasse was because it's a southern, southernish kind of state, Maryland, I believe. So I voted for number three just because she didn't answer. She might have said, I don't know either, but... <laughs> Peggy. Well, I didn't vote for number three because a jockey's bug is 10 pounds. Uh, for an apprentice. I voted for number one, and don't ask me why, because all... Uh, I didn't get right answers from all of them on anything. I mean, I got some right answers, but everyone answered one thing wrong. <laughs> According to the telegraph. <laughs> all right, Barry, well, I was uh, strongly drawn toward number one about the clockwise, and uh, on the other hand, I felt intensely about number three, about quarter house horses and all, but I'm devoted to number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's spreading it around. So I voted for number two with, because of your question about a Morgan. But it's not a draft. It's not a draft, horse, it's a right. I've broken this whole thing wide open. <laughs> well, none of them knew what a Percheron was, which is a very large horse. But I thought number two gave marvelous answers about uh, the prejudice of men against women. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, that was good. <laughs> How can you say men are prejudiced against women? You know, Jimmy? <laughs> that was probably the bitterest reason I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> you sure are. And there we are at our moment of truth again, about to learn which one of these charming young ladies actually is the owner, trainer, and jockey of a racehorse. So will the real Virginia David please stand up? It is. <laughs> Oh, 
What is, what is your problem? No, no, I have no problem. Oh, I'm quite happy. happy. So I might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what you're talking about. <laughs> now what's your problem? What is the Morgan? I don't know. It used to be in Wall Street, as far as I know. <laughs> far as I, I could go with my knowledge. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Judy Cross, and I work for Weed Radio and Television Corporation here in New York City. And number three, may we have your real name and what you do, please? My name is Afne McLean, and I am a uh, bunny at the New York Playboy Club. <laughs> <laughs> okay, York Playboy. Well, we thank you all and hope you had fun, and you did pretty well at fooling the panel. That's two and two, and those two that are wrong are the ones you're most interested in, I'm sure. At $250 each, that's $500 for you ladies to sort of pass a lot. That, of course, comes to you from Dristan as well as a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Dristan as well. Thank you and hope you enjoyed yourselves. We certainly enjoyed having you with us. Good night and God bless you. And now may I present our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Roger Torrey Peterson. My name is Roger Torrey Peterson. My name is Roger Torrey Peterson. Very well, panel, you've had a look. Now give a look at your copy, if you will, of this affidavit and follow along with me. I, Roger Torrey Peterson, am probably the world's best known ornithologist and a familiar name to America's four million bird watchers. One of my books, A Field Guide to the Birds, has sold almost a million copies. In addition to the text, I also did the sketches and the paintings for each of my 14 volumes. I am an active bird watcher myself. Of the 650 wild bird species in the United States and Canada, I have personally observed all but five. Signed, Roger Torrey Peterson. <laughs> And here, panel, we have three gentlemen all claiming to be a very well-known gentleman. Roger Torrey Peterson by name, world-famous bird expert. And I think we should start this with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, uh, who is, uh, what is the rarest bird you've ever uh, observed? The rarest bird I've ever observed is the uh, 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 yellow-billed woodpecker. Uh, number two, what is a numismatist? I do not know. Number three? Stamp collector. Uh, number one, who was Fabre? Uh, he was a famous French ornithologist. And uh, number two, how many hooping cranes are left in this country? Uh, 32. Number three, when you go bird watching, what is the best time of day? First thing in the morning. How early? Two, three, four. And uh, number one, who publishes your books? Uh, Houghton Mifflin Company. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number two, is there such a thing as a hooded crow? If there is, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. No, number three, wh where is that whooping crane sanctuary? Do you know? In Texas. Uh, number three, tell me, what is the rarest bird you've ever <clears throat> observed? <clears throat> Ivory-billed woodpecker. Thank you. Number one, do you, what do you think about that hooded crow? Is there such a bird? No, sir, there is not a hooded crow. Thank you. Number three, what do pelicans subsist on? Fish. Fish? Fish, is that <laughs> fish? Well, that's right. Peggy. Uh, thank you. Um, um, number one, where was Audubon born? Uh, he was born in Canada. In Canada? Number two, do you agree with that? No, I don't. Uh, number two, where do you think Audubon was born? Uh, Haiti. Thank you. And number three, do you agree with that answer? Yes. Thank you. Um, number one, uh, somebody just published a book on hummingbirds. Uh, 400 different kinds of hummingbirds. I think at least there's a lot of them. Do you know who that was? Uh, yes, that was Joe Huntington. Joe Huntington. Thank you. Um, Ooh. In collaboration with uh, Mitch Miller. Mr. Two. <laughs> Mr. Two. Uh, number two, please. <laughs> Do people still hunt by falcon? I don't mean the car. I mean those birds that they... <laughs> uh, 
not in North America. They don't hunt by falcon in North America. Thank Barry. You. <laughs> uh, number uh, three, uh, uh, how fast can an eagle fly? I don't know. All right, number three again. Uh, this increasing use of insecticides, is it, in your opinion, killing birds off? I think so. <laughs> See, I feel sorry for the birds. I don't know what to... <laughs> Uh, what, number one, what, uh, what bird would you look for at night rather than the daytime? Oh, uh, there are a number. The night hawk is one, the owl. Number two, what, what bird has the most beautiful, uh, call? Go ahead. What bird has the most beautiful call? The mockingbird. Well, you just heard the it. The time is up. I'm sorry. I tried to sneak Thank one in you. there for you. But the time is up and time for you to mark your ballot. So will you kindly do so now, panel? Mark them. At once and without change, and of course without any consultation whatsoever, as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked, all dies cast. For whom did you cast yours, Tom? I don't. I don't want to say I'm a follow the leader type, or that I ever cheated very much when I was in school. But as you can see, I voted for number three. But you can see it's a funny one. That's because my eye caught Peggy writing two on her card, and I swear to you, I almost wrought two. Right. I didn't... <laughs> almost. <laughs> I almost did, and it was wrong. If it was wrong, how do you know? No, okay, I mean, Peggy, for whom did you vote? I think it was right to write two, and so I wrote two because he knew that Audubon was born in the West Indies, which he was born in. <laughs> you never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Hardly. Uh, Barry. I voted for number three, bud, uh, when I asked him about the birds being killed off by the insecticides. He had a little trill in his voice there, which he picked up from an old mockingbird. <laughs> and Kitty, what is your choice? I voted for number one. Well, that cracks it wide number open. Two, <laughs> number two said that Fabra was a well-known ornithologist. I think he was an entomologist. And number three said that uh, Numismatist was a stamp collector, and it's a coin collector. So I voted for number one. All righty, there we have it. By process of elimination or otherwise, our panel has arrived at some sterling results with good sound reasons behind them. So let's see how you're doing if you're guessing along at home as we learn now which one of these gentlemen is the outstanding ornithologist. So will the real Roger Torrey Peterson please stand up? Thank you, sir. I'm so glad because Gavin Maxwell, just uh, uh, I just read his book, Ring of Bright Water, that marvelous thing about the otters, and he refers fairly consistently to hooded crows, and if, the, and if there hadn't been one, I would have really been upset. <laughs> Number one and two what said there were no such things. Ruined thing. the whole thing. Well, sir, we thank you very much, Mr. Peterson. It was a great pleasure having you with us this evening. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, sir? Uh, my name is Fritz Leffer, and I work for the Metals Division of Union Carbide Corporation. <laughs> Number two, you also garnered a vote. What is your real name and what do you do, sir? I'm associated with Gulf American Land Corporation, the developers of Cape Coral, Florida. And, and my name, name is Connie Mack, Jr. Wow. Well, we thank you, gentlemen. It was a great pleasure having all of you here, as a matter of fact. And the score shows two incorrect votes at $250 each, $500. Not to be sneezed at, I'm sure, in any language. And that comes to you from Dristan as well as, of course, when you weigh out a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Dristan. And our thanks to you for spending your evening with us. Good night, and God bless you. Well, we've learned a lot and had a lot of fun, and most of the fun and the things that I learn, at least, are due to you nice people, and I thank you for that. It's our pleasure, bud. Such a joy to be with every week, I must say. Let me thank all of you and remind you once again to be with us, of course, the same time next week. And I'll see you tomorrow on our daytime show, I trust. In the meantime, good night from Dristan, and may I remind you once more to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Hudson, Bill Totman production. Docking equipment by Miller's Riding Shop.
Health has been brought to you tonight by Dristan Decongestant Tablets. To relieve sinus congestion, Cole's miseries, today's Dristan works where it hurts. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program is pre-recorded.